Hello, hello. How are we all doing today? It's a glorious Sunday, but we're inside painting because, you know, what else there is to do on the weekend? How's everyone doing? I can see we've got uh, Andy and Jay in the chat. How are we doing, gents? We all good? What are you guys uh, planning on painting today? I'm cracking on with some more Marvel Crisis Protocol. So today I'm going to be painting uh, Rocket, Groot and Iron Man. And you know what? We might even sneak in Captain America if... Uh, if these go pretty quickly because I don't think I don't think Groot will take too long and uh, I've got a plan for Iron Man that we'll see so basically what we've done today is uh, primed these already in a brown because they're both predominantly brown uh, I thought it'd be a lot easier to get that base coat down before we start and then we'll start building that up in kind of like tree like colors for him and then Rocket's going to be kind of brown black and white anyway so he should be fairly easy to do and then for Iron Man, we're going to have a play with um, Metal Plus from Instar. That lets you create metallic colours, basically. So by using whoop, a red and a metal, we can do his kind of like uh, metallic red armour. I, uh, I had a few ideas about how to do it. Uh, maybe spray it all gold and then cover it with a uh, transparent red. One option. Uh, equally... I've seen some good stuff done with like contrast style paints over it, over a, a silver or gold base. But uh, I thought if we can try and mix up a metallic red, that'll be cool because it means that we can then mix up a highlight colour as well. It's worth a shot. A bit of experimental, but uh, we'll have a play. And then obviously we'll pick out the, uh, the gold details and then paint the arc reactor and do the glow and everything. So that should be a bit of fun. So... Jay's all good. Andy's really good. Uh, you're going to paint some Rohan Warriors. So I think about 12 months ago, Andy, we were on about doing a uh, Middle Earth tournament and then the world ended. So uh, yeah, I'm still absolutely up for, for playing some Middle Earth. I think that'll be a bit of fun. Uh, I've got a Dunland army that I painted up during lockdown and I've got a load of hobbits to do as well. In fact, you know what? We might have some hobbits on the stream next, next week. That seems like a good thing to paint. Uh, excuse the absolute bomb site behind me. Uh, a little bit of a Napoleonic force getting built up here as well. So if anyone's got any interest in uh, Napoleonics, uh, we might get some of them on the stream as well. They're going to be a case of uh, quick battle ready uh, paint jobs because obviously there's a lot of models to paint. So we're not going to be uh, going all out on those, apart from maybe like the officers and stuff. So yeah, let us know what you think on that. So I think what we're going to do is start cracking on with these. To start with, I'm uh, going to put a wash down on the wooden areas just to bring those down. And then what we're going to do is build them up over the course of the of the day. Uh, probably starting with a with a lighter brown, going up, maybe get some greys in there as well. Because, uh, you know, a tree isn't just brown. There's different greys and greens and stuff in there. So we'll be building that up. Rocket himself has got like a yellow jumpsuit. And then kind of the body of his gun is going to be like a yellowy orange uh, and then we might put some glow effects on the end of there. Obviously his kind of whiskers are going to be white and black. So do those details. And then yeah, while we're waiting for the washers to dry on these guys, we'll probably start working on this, uh, the metallics on Iron Man. So, ooh, Jay's working on a secret model. Do I know what this secret model is, Jay? It's, um, it's hard to know at times. <laughs> he'll, uh, he'll pull out a random one like, oh yeah, I painted this last week. It's all cool. So what we're going to do is start off putting a, a kind of a brown wash on this just to work into the recesses. So if we grab a brush, that should do. And my brushes are all nice and clean. I don't know if you've seen some of our uh, other videos that have gone up this week, but I've been uh, giving them an intensive spring clean using uh, Soap Plus, which is really, really nice stuff. So... Our sponsors Instar sent these out to have a play with and I think they go up for pre-order on Monday uh, and they're really good. It's like less than six quid for all that and gets your brushes super clean. Um, yeah, definitely worth definitely worth looking at that. I was very impressed. I've used kind of like a master's brush cleaner in the past and um, yeah, it's, it's good but I found out because it's a hard soap it can be a little tricky to use sometimes. They're all liquid, so 
Yeah, it's uh, it's been good to breathe some life back into some of my old brushes, including brushes that I thought were uh, were long dead. Uh, stuff that I'd use for putting uh, glue, uh, for gluing like sand on bases, or had been particularly uh, mistreated over the uh, over the years. So yeah, so they've been resurrected. Some necromancy done on brushes this week. And then, other than that, uh, Team Sprues and Brews have been rattling through the contents of uh, Kill Team Pariah Nexus. Uh, Jay wrote a review that is up on the site. Jay, if you got it, could you bob it into the chat for us? And then Dave filmed the accompanying video for that one. I uh, I, I got off quite lightly. I was on uh, terrain duty this week, so just rattled through the terrain with the airbrush. Really nice stuff, though. Um, I, I love the look of the heavy intercessors, and the, uh, the the flayed ones look really kind of horrific and scary compared to the old ones. So yeah, I was I was really impressed with the models. But the scenery, for I mean, realistically, the pieces that you're just going to use in your games of Kill Team, but they would make nice kind of like low level, kind of blocking terrain for 40k as well. So yeah, so that was a bit of fun. And then yeah, this week I want to try and clear as much of the backlog that I can because uh, <coughs> hopefully we should see that Curse City is up for pre-order soon. Now I might be completely wrong but we've seen an awful lot of information about it now and that could well be a sign that it's, uh, that it's on the way for uh, pre-order soon. So uh, yeah, I really hope that's like next week's pre-order. Could be wrong. Obviously, we won't see until 6 o'clock tonight when the uh, new release article goes up on Warcom. But yeah, I'd love to see that. Obviously, we've got a lot of stuff coming, though. So there's the, you know, Drakari. There's the Drakari versus Sisters Battle Box. There's the new War Master Titan. Uh, Tree Men for Middle Earth. So yeah, there's a lot of stuff that could be coming before that. I just, I just really hope it's Kill City because... I uh, really, really like the look of that box, and it's going to form the basis of my uh, undead army. Ah, Dave has appeared in the chat. How are we doing, sir? I hope you're uh, doing some painting as well this fine day. I don't know how warm it is outside. I think it's quite cold, but uh, obviously with restrictions easing soon in the UK, I say soon, relatively soon in the UK, uh, it's, it's very nearly garden hammer weather, so uh, I'm sure we'll be able to get some games of Warhammer in the garden at some point. That'll be uh, that'll be something to look forward to, because it's been a long old time since we've managed to have a game of anything. And there's so many games I want to play. I want to play this, Marvel Crisis Protocol, because it looks cool. I, uh, I've picked up a load of historical stuff over lockdown as well, so... Uh, Black Seas looks cool. That's like a naval game. Uh, Black Powder, obviously being the Napoleonics I've been uh, been talking about earlier. A couple of board games that I want to play as well. So the problem is, by the time we're playing games again, it's going to be a case of uh, <laughs> what do we play? Obviously we were kind of wanting to do a big uh, crusade campaign. We wanted to get back onto the Sigma bandwagon with the... Uh, the Luminous now being released, so yeah. In fact, both guys are in the chat, so what do you guys want to play first when we're out of lockdown? Uh, oh, so Dave says it is garden weather. Have you been, have you been out today? I did see on the uh, phone it was, what, a couple of degrees, so I thought it was a bit on the cold side. That's why I held off on spraying a few models. I'm hoping after this stream the uh, it's a little bit warmer and we'll get some base paints down on some more models that I want to paint up over the next week. Uh, Dave's also been working on five Reavers for the Death Watch. Excellent. So, um, if you don't know, Dave and Jay also worked on the models for Kill Team Pariah. Uh, Dave painted up the Necron side, which looked really nice. I like your kind of dark, gritty, horrible looking flayed ones that look like they've just dragged themselves out of the earth. And the uh, the Chronomancer, and then Jay was painting the Ultramarine side. And after <laughs> after giving Ultramarine fans a bit of a bashing over the uh, over the years, I have to admit, 
I've got a bit of a soft spot for them now. I really enjoy painting up the um, was he a captain? I think that I painted the other week. He was uh, he was quite fun to paint up. So I'm actually looking forward to painting some more, more ultramarines. Yeah, I know bad times, guys. Uh, oh, Jesus, Adeptus Titanicus, I think, first, while I finished off my Luminous and Blood Angels. Yeah, I really want to get some Adeptus Titanicus on the go. I've uh, got Legio Ignatum pretty much done. I've got some of the uh, Mechanicus pattern knights to paint, and I don't know whether to um, kind of add them to my... Uh, to my Ignatum force and their uh, allied knights, or maybe, maybe, maybe put them as part of a uh, traitor force. Legio Mortis beckons, and I feel I need to uh, add some traitor engines, just as a different scheme. And my um, Ignatum force is massive, and it means that. Um, you know, if anyone fancies playing a game and, and doesn't have a um, mana pull of their own, we can use both my forces. So, yeah, that's the that's the logic on that one. Um, Dave says, thanks, that was the effect I was going for. Andy says, evil smurfs. Evil smurfs. So, yeah, I mean, they are nice to paint, though, Andy. The blue does work really well. I know where uh, Jay spent the last week frantically painting ultramarines as well. So, yeah. I don't know if I do an army, but I'm definitely going to paint a couple more. Just uh, just for a bit of fun. So, we've got the washes down on these. So, they're going to need a little bit of time to dry before we start building up. Basically, the wood colours I'm going to build up first. So, on Groot and on the root coming out of the ground on uh, Rocket's base. Uh, and then once we've done all that, we'll start working on Rocket. So while the washes are just drying, we're going to start a bit of work on Iron Man. So a bit of an assortment of characters we've got today. I've even got Captain America prepped just in case uh, just in case we do need something else to paint while on the uh, the stream this morning. But yeah, so for Iron Man, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to mix up a metallic red. Uh, like I said at the start of the stream, one option was to spray him completely gold. And then put in either red uh, washes or a glaze or build up a um, uh, uh, use the clear paints from Games Workshop. So Angron Red is a clear red that covers metallics really nicely. Um, friend of the show Room Brush used the same uh, effect on um, on his Golden Demon winning knights, and it looked really nice. But I don't think that's the right colour for Iron Man. It's very much more a metallic red. So what we're going to do is basically try and mix one up together with these. So this will be a little bit of trial and error. And you know, it's uh, never be scared of trying out something on a model. You can always fix it. The worst thing you can do is not try something and then never learn or pick up new techniques and stuff. So yeah, I'm going to go all in and uh, yeah, give it a go. Uh, <laughs> Andy says, rabbit. Yeah, I haven't picked up Thor yet. That's definitely one of my shopping lists because uh, I'm going to have to paint up him. Uh, Dave says, maybe a kill team of Ultramarines, combat patrol. Yeah, maybe, maybe. I was tempted to do a um, a uh, Crusade Force. So, 1,000 points. Oops. 1,000 points of uh, Ultramarines. Maybe focused around um, the Tyrannic War. So, kind of snow bases slain Tyranids on the bases. I think that'd be a bit of fun. Uh, Jay needs to total up his Ultramarines. I've got about 4.5k painted now. That is impressive. We need some big, like, Apocalypse battle at some point. Right, so we've mixed them up. And what we're going to do is have a bit of a go with this. So, I think we want it to be quite metallic. So I'm going to put more metallic paint than red in this. And then we can always tweak as we go. And again, these paints are dead easy to use. I can use them to focus. Just put a few drops of, of what you need. Mix them together on the palette. And then you've got your paint sorted. 
So to be fair, that doesn't look a bad colour. That's three drops of red and five drops of uh, metal. And then what we can do then is um, start to highlight that as well by mixing up the same colour but with additional red. So that should work pretty well. So let's see how this looks on. Now obviously it's quite a light uh, base coat so we might need a couple of coats of this. Uh, metallics I normally put over black so um, yeah we'll have to see how this goes. I'm going to paint the whole thing uh, red as well rather than trying to kind of uh, miss out the gold bits it's easy to just paint it all and then block in the gold areas later on. So let's see how this goes on. Yeah that is a bit thin at the minute but we'll put on another layer and slowly build this up. And it should once it's all worked its magic gives a nice metallic red effect now with the uh, the kind of zenithal kind of base i've done on this that should give us a little bit of natural shading anyway which is a nice little cheat that i tend to do especially if you've got thin paint because paints are kind of translucent anyway so if you build up a couple of thin layers it will retain kind of the colour of the, 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 the kind of base layers underneath. So uh, yeah, so here where the, the lighter areas are white, the lower areas are uh, black with my base coat. That should give us a nice little effect. As to the colour of this, I think that's pretty much spot on for Iron Man's armour. I've got a reference photo just out of shot. And don't forget, we'll be adding like washes and stuff to this anyway. So, what we're looking for is that nice metallic fleck. I don't know if you can actually see there. Focus. But yeah, just try and get that metallic colour building up. Since uh, painting up these models as well, I've been slowly working my way through all of the Marvel films in timeline order, not release order. Uh, Disney Plus gives you a couple of options on on the ordering of, of watching the films, so I opted for uh, timeline order. So starting with uh, Captain America, then Captain Marvel, and I'm currently up to um, Avengers Assemble. Uh, as you'll remember from I think last week on the stream, Dave's 10 out of 10 film. That has been surpassed by 11 out of 10 films and 12 out of 10 films. It is a good film, though. I think Jay, Jay would argue the point, but it is a good film. But yeah, that's kind of uh, been my motivation for painting these guys, because, uh, yeah, I've been watching all the films, so... Looking forward to getting these all on the tabletop. So yeah, I've, I've really had a, a very random hobby uh, week, really. Obviously the focus was on all the uh, Kill Team prior Nexus stuff, but I also did some uh, rigging on uh, some Black Sea ships. So that was uh, that was hard work. If you've not seen the models before, basically um, you can you can just build them as is and put the uh, the the sails on, and that's absolutely fine. But you can also Go the extra mile and they give you a kind of um, a bobbin of thread for you to then um, rig the ships. And there's a pretty comprehensive guide within the rule book showing you how historically the ships were rigged and the best way to do that in miniature scale. It's a very fiddly job. It needs tweezers. It needs patience. But it looks really, really nice. When you pull it off, so um, so yeah, that's what I've been been working on this week. And then outside of that, I'm just gonna clean my brush and get some more paint. Outside of that, I've been uh, yeah building like I say some Napoleonics, built some British line infantry, built some uh, 95th uh, rifles, who you'll recognise from Sharp if you've watched that kind of thing. 
uh, with the plans of making a, a massive um, British and French um, army. And if I show you this as well from behind here, you get some really nice like flags and things on the in in the instruction manual that you can cut out and give to your units. And if you've got one here to hand, yeah. And the models are really really nice. They're really cool. So they they, they go on um, square bases, holding four models when they're finished. Uh, I'm going to paint them all individually, stick them on the bases, then base them, just because that's going to be a lot easier to get to. But yeah, even with the metal kind of standards and stuff. So yeah, really looking forward to painting them up. They're going to take a bit of time. Like I said, I'm going to try and do more kind of battle ready than uh, maybe the standard I'd paint a normal army to, just because... There's going to be so many models in that army, it'd take me forever if I tried to get them painted to some kind of uh, higher standard. So uh, yeah, and I'm not too, I'm not too concerned about that. Certainly for the the main kind of bulk of the troops, they uh, they can be nice, quick, quick colour schemes. Got no, got no issues about that. So. And then yeah, the um, the basic uh, basic troops do them quite quick, and then all of the kind of characters and officers and stuff will spend a bit more time on them. So yeah, we're getting that red built up on Iron Man, and again we probably won't get the full metallic effect until we've got a couple of coats of this on him. And then we'll do some pin washes and we'll mix up a slightly brighter red to do some highlights with as well. So yeah, it should be a bit of fun. Gonna use the same principle on Gamora, uh, no Gamora Nebula when I get to her, because she's got kind of like a metallic blue and gold faceplate. So uh yeah, we'll be we'll be using the same principles on that. And then, uh, yeah, that should look cool. So, um, Dave says, feel like my scoring mechanic will never work. What's Oh, the, the scoring mechanic on the films, yeah. It's, uh, I think you need to, I think you need to go back and, and rescore these films, Dave. Uh, Jay says, I just found the baddies to Saturday morning generic baddies. Okay. I mean, it is a comic book film. They kind of are, Generic Saturday morning baddies. See, I suppose I think I think me and me and Dave are more um, comic book fans than than you as well, Jay. Maybe. Don't know if that maybe makes a difference. There's lots of geeky kind of like references and in jokes and stuff. So, like I said, we're going to go over the whole thing in the red. And then we'll go over the um, the gold areas with gold. That just makes it a lot easier to tie everything together. It looks a bit less messy if you do it that way around. Rather than... Otherwise you could end up with some unnatural looking gaps in the colour. If you try and kind of leave the areas white for the, um, for the gold areas later. But we are starting... To build up this colour. So just going in and giving this another bit of a coat to build up that. And there's definitely a nice metallic sheen to this. I don't know how well that's showing on the camera there. It's, uh, it's not focusing, is it? So yeah, we've got a nice kind of metallic candy red armour for Iron Man. Again, we'll wash it down and uh, go over with another kind of uh, layer over the top. We're just building up lots of layers at this point to get that full effect. And I've full chance to kind of play with these uh, Metal Plus colours yet. So that's pretty much my thinking about using them on Iron Man to have a play and an experiment and see... Uh, what kind of effects we can do. So yeah, 
it's starting to go on okay now. Well, I will say if you are using Instar paints, they are kind of super thin out of the bottle. So on one side, you know, you are going to have to put multiple coats, but on the other, you don't need to thin them at all, really, because they go on super smooth. Yeah, they go on fine through the airbrush as well. So I could have shot all this through the airbrush. Um, but obviously later on, we want a bit more... Uh, control of which panels are gold and red so I thought if we're doing that and there's only him to do we'll do it by brush that's no biggie it should dry quite smooth anyway uh, power armor and stuff I normally um, I normally airbrush on because it it gives it a smoother a kind of a smoother finish so yeah with with this Obviously not having to play with it yet, I thought by using the brush we just have a little more a little more control than firing it blindly through the airbrush. Especially for a first attempt. But yeah, that's starting to build. What do you think guys? Is that a colour is that colour too red for Iron Man, do we think? He's looking okay, isn't he? Let us know. Does he need bringing down a shade? Obviously, this is just the initial coat, and there's there's lots of stuff we can do yet. But I think he's looking suitably suitably red and metallic. We've just got a little bit under here that we've missed. Again, that probably need another coat on it. Uh, when we come to do the um, the arc reactor. And his like repulsor beams and stuff. We're going to try a bit of um, object source lighting as well to get a bit of a nice glow around them. Because I uh, that should hopefully add to the kind of the illusion that all this power is glowing out of him. Uh, so Jace says, I'm not going to argue with Marvel fanatics. And he says, That looks like hot rod red to me. It is, isn't it? Tony Stark's always one for, for style. So, uh, yeah, he's going to have a, a suitably over-the-top red. I'm just going to move this camera back a little bit because it's having issues focusing today. Come on. There we go. So, yeah, we're getting there. I think maybe one more coat just to get that super smooth. And then we'll start kind of putting some pin washes into it. And then obviously pick out the gold areas. Yeah, I'm fairly happy with that colour. So just mix up a final batch just to do a final layer on here. And then, yeah, we should be good to add some more details. What we can probably do then as well is move back to um, Groose and Rocket and start working on some of the details on them. So uh, what does everyone else hope is up for pre-order next week from Games Workshop? Now, obviously they said that February, uh, January and February we're going to be fortnightly releases. Uh, I assume we're going to be back to weekly releases in March. Of course, there is always the chance that Games Workshop make an announcement today that uh, fortnightly releases continue for the near future. Um, we don't know anything. Uh, I'm just assuming that we're back to weekly. So if that's the case... Uh, what do you guys want to say? What do we hope is on the horizon? Obviously, I've already said um, very much hoping that Curse City is up for pre-order. That is uh, that is the dream at the minute. Equally, I really want to get my hands on the uh, the Warmaster Titan, and I know Jay is desperate for the uh, the Lumineth as well. Because uh, we have got um, the, the Techless book due at some point as well. In fact, we've got the... Um, we've got the... Um, the campaign book. Or two campaign books. I think one was like a, a mission pack. The other one was more crusade based. Exploring the, uh, the Death Guard. Taking on uh, a Mechanicus planet, I believe. So that's uh, that's something I'm looking forward to having a look at. 
because um yeah i did like the uh the necron one that they did i mean i like my uh crusade content so stuff like that does appeal uh andy wants to see the dracari codex well again that is something else that presumably we are going to see in march it's just when isn't it wouldn't surprise me if that's an early one to get that one kind of out the way because really i don't think it, outside of the new um uh, lilith respect model in the uh battle box i don't think there's any other new models coming with them not that they've announced so i think we'd have seen them by now um and again if that does come out i'd expect that battle box alongside it because it's a nice uh tie-in purchase with it so yeah i uh i think those will come together and then they tend to bookend battle boxes with codexes so um with the other force in that box being the sisters of battle i'd imagine them to be the next 40k codex after the drakari and again i think we'll see some more models for them so that'll probably be a bigger a bigger release obviously there must be some master plan to when they bring out kits uh stuff such as easter holidays and christmas and summer breaks get factored in on big releases so yeah i kind of assumed that we'd get curse city around easter time the fact that they've kind of shown it all off on warcom and on the preview shows a lot earlier than i thought they would kind of implies <coughs> sorry kind of implies that um it is coming a little bit sooner so that's super exciting and then on the previous show we saw that the uh the undead are getting kind of full releases down the line as well so um i imagine that'll be that'll be a little bit later on maybe after the lumineth are done i don't think we'll see um much well if anything from them really until the lumineth release is done so uh so yeah either way it's it's exciting though i'm uh all the stuff that they've shown off this year has been really exciting so it's uh interesting to see what the rest of the year is going to hold okay so uh andy says space popes please well we've seen a few rumor engines that could be uh minister and priests and the like so it wouldn't surprise me if um if we do see something like that cool so he's looking all right now we've got a nice glossy metallic red on him which will work as a great base for what we're going to do next uh building up the gold going into the details and then work on the arc reactor so oops so i'll put him down to dry a little bit i'm just going to give the brush a bit of a clean and then we'll see how that wash is dried on a uh, rocket and Groot and start working on uh, on those guys this brush is really filthy after that uh, one thing with this i guess because the the metal plus has got metallic particles in it um yeah you probably do want to give your brush a proper a proper clean after using it because that that'll probably gunk it up so yeah just keep that in mind if you are using metallics uh really i'd probably use a different water pot as well when you work with metallics because otherwise you're gonna have flecks of uh metallic paint in there and that could transfer to your brush on your non-metallic colors and then you'll have little spots of um little spots of metal on your other colors and you don't want that because it'll look a bit it'll look a bit naff won't it so i think iron man's going to need a little bit of time just for that to dry before we start going in with the details so what we're going to do is start working on rocket and Groot and build up some of the colors on these so we're going to use a lighter brown and basically start just kind of layering in some lighter colors uh, we're going to be quite you know extreme in the contrast and stuff with the other models uh, i don't know if i've shown them they're on the stream last week i don't know if i've shown the finished ones yet 
on the other models, I've gone for quite a comic booky uh, contrasted view. So we've got Drax the Destroyer. We have got Spider Man. Again, his red's a little bit more muted, but still fairly comic booky in the style. And Carol Danvers herself, Captain Marvel. So yeah, quite um, contrasting comic booky colours, just because I think it fits the these models a lot better. So let's get the next colour out. <coughs> Sorry guys, I've got a frog in my throat today. So let's start building this up. So we've got a nice mid brown there. I'm just going to add some what plus just to make it flow a little bit better. It's uh, it's magical stuff if you haven't used it. It makes the paint flow really, really nicely. Just mix that in. Okay. Let's see how this goes on. So we'll start on this root and rocket space first. And basically what we're going to do is just start layering up the raised surfaces. Again, with it being quite a comic booky style, it doesn't really matter if you don't have any kind of like you know, transitions between the layers. Because they will be more kind of extreme highlights and contrasting colours in a comic book. So, yeah, you can be quite, quite bold and colourful with these. In the way, in the way that I'm, I'm trying to paint them as well, there's absolutely nothing wrong with painting them in a more uh, realistic style. I just think for the... For the models, it just adds a bit of something having those kind of really bright, vivid, bombastic colours. Equally, I've seen some really nicely painted, like realistic ones as well. All depends on your paint style, really. But yeah, that's uh, that's looking all right. I'm quite happy with with that colour. And again, if we hit this with a with another highlight, we might drop some more shade back into the crevices later on. But that is what we're looking like for the root itself. And then Groot, obviously this colour is going to cover the majority of him using the same principle. And then we'll have some a bit of colour variation stuff in there as well. Just to make it a bit more interesting to look at than just, just the brown. So what we're doing here is just working our way around and getting those colours in. Uh, I'm not sure what colour to do his eyes. I think in the comics... He's got white eyes. I did have a copy of Guardians of the Galaxy kicking around to to see what they did. And I, I've forgotten to bring it with me. On the stock art on the box, I don't know if you can see that. I think they've used white eyes there as well. So yeah, we'll go with that. So we'll make sure to leave uh, those dark areas around the eyes on him. Because that will add to the contrast of the eyes then. And that should work a little bit better. So yeah, uh, don't know if anyone else out in the chat has uh, painted any Marvel Crisis Protocol before, or has any urges to. I've uh, I've not actually played this game yet. I mean, I predominantly picked it up for the models, but the game does look pretty cool. I uh, like I said earlier in the uh, in the stream, I'd been on a bit of a a Marvel binge, so I just wanted to paint up some core characters. 
for fans of moodier, darker comics. Uh, I think there's also a DC miniatures game, but I don't know. The, the DC characters never really appealed to me. I, um, I don't know. The films always seem super, super dark and depressing and... It's always raining and, and at night and everyone speaks in a gravelly voice and I don't know. Nobody's ever having a good day in a DC film, are they? Do get me wrong, I enjoy uh, like The Dark Knight. Batman Begins is a cool film. And there is a little bit of humour in some of them. But... Uh, yeah, it's not... For me, I find the uh, the Marvel films more entertaining. Here's where... Uh, here's where Jay comes and says, well, actually, the, the DC films are better. Uh, Dave says, best kind of binges. What a Marvel binge is the best kind of binge, yeah. I, um... I tend to do that. I don't know about you guys. I tend to do that. I'll... I rewatched um, Infinity War and Endgame, and then decided to go back and watch the whole lot. Uh, and obviously, you've been watching One Division because it's amazing. Uh, Dave, I really hope you've caught up and watched One Division because we're on like the final episode on Friday, and I'm absolutely going to to spoil things if you don't hurry up and and start watching it because it's amazing. Probably one of my favourite things that Marvel have done. Uh, and if you've only watched the first few episodes and that's put you off, stick through it. By the time you get to episode four, things become a lot more clear. Um, Andy Wood would like to pick up some Marvel Crisis Protocol uh, just to paint, but only about 60% through his backlog. Yeah, I've... I've tried and failed in some regards to get my backlog done this year. Now, I have picked up these guys. I've picked up the Napoleonic stuff. I, have, I am trying to kind of clear some of the armies and stuff I have got. Because traditionally, I'd be like, ah, oh, that's amazing, I'm buying that army. And then I've got an army sat unpainted for ages. So, yeah, I've been trying to catch up and, and paint some bits. I've got a couple of units left to paint on my Sons of Horus, and then they're done. So I want to try and get some paint, uh, some paint on them this week, with the aims of finishing them by this week. The following week, I reckon I can get the rest of the Sons of Horus done. I've got three Predators, a unit of Veterans, and a unit of Terminators to do. They'll be fairly quick. The majority of the kind of colours on them are done with the airbrush anyway, so that's pretty quick to do. And then it's just a case of going in and kind of picking out the details and stuff. So, yeah, I can churn them out pretty quickly. So that should be should be good. And then, um, and then yeah, after that, uh, I've got some Daughters of Cain. I want to finish off. I want to add some Snake Ladies. I've got a load on built that I need to do. I also need to paint my Mega Gargan. So I know, Andy, you've been working on your Mega Gargan recently. So I want to get them done and then my Sons of Bayonet army is finished. And then, yeah, working on stuff that I've got left over. So like I said, I've got a, a Hobbit army that needs doing. Uh, that's a lot of Hobbits to paint, but again, using a, a method of painting to get those done quickly, I think it'd be really helpful. And get them them certainly battle ready, and then maybe kind of give the characters a bit more attention. Even if I do a fairly basic paint job on the hobbits themselves, uh, otherwise I'll go mad painting hobbits for the rest of my life. Um, and then yeah, the, I've got some some of the new knights for Titanicus. But I am in two minds about whether I do a traitor force and use all the kind of uh, kind of mechanica mechanicum mechanicum of Mars. Align stuff um, for a traitor force. So we'll see how that goes. I might just paint them up as my uh, uh, Tyrannus. Tyrannus, like I painted my uh, my current ones as. 
we'll see. I've got a, lot, I've got a, a big... A big kind of night force for Titanica, so probably don't need to add those to that one. I think they'd look good using different kind of night chassis in my traitor force. I think that'd make things look a little bit more interesting. Uh, so, Jay says, My favourite are the Dark Knight and Thor Ragnarok. The rest could take a leave, but that's just me. Thor Ragnarok is an amazing film. That is that is one of my favourite Marvel films. Uh, again, I suppose I'm a fan of Guardians of the Galaxy, so it's got that same kind of uh, cosmic side to it. There's a lot of humour in it. It's a cool film. Dark Knight. Dark Knight is a good film, but it is, it is a bit grimdark, isn't it? Sometimes you just need uh, you need some jokes. Um, Dave, no, not fully caught up. Give me till Wednesday. By not fully caught up, does that mean you've not actually watched any more episodes since the last time we talked about it, Dave? Is that what we're saying? If so, I'm, I'm disappointed. I'm not angry, I'm disappointed. Because it's amazing. It's amazing. Uh, Andy Woods agrees that WandaVision is amazing. Uh, Andy, yeah, the Mega Gargoon was really fun to paint. Yeah, it, they, they, they are really nice kits. I, um, I really like them. I really like the fact that out of the kit, the three different builds have all got different silhouettes. So they look... You know, very different, which was something the Imperial Knights didn't have at launch because they all had that same pose with the feet. Um, it looked more duplicated than the the Mega Gargants do. Obviously, if you build the same Mega Gargant, they've got they're gonna have the same they've got the silhouette. But the three different builds out of the box, the way the kind of models posed is different between the three of them. It uh, it definitely mixes things up. Oh, we've got a wild Ben Bailey in the chat. How are you doing, sir? You good? What are you uh, What are you working on today? Anything exciting? Uh, <laughs> Jay says, I don't think Dave is fully caught up on Game of Thrones yet. No. So Dave tends to... Uh, to be horrifically behind on any show. And 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 plead that we don't have any spoilers, but you know a line has to be drawn somewhere. I'm afraid you've got you've got till next week, Dave, and then I'm just spoiling the entirety of One Division. That's just that's just how it goes. I'm afraid. Gonna be cruel to be kind. Get Leanne watching it; she'll love it. Uh, more Eben Scythes. Oh, I don't think I've seen those. Is this another is this another Space Marine successor chapter? I know where uh, Ben, were you planning on doing a, a successor for every chapter or something mad like that? Absolute insanity. I'm still torn on what I've I've got two Indomitus boxes under this desk full of Space Marines. And I still don't know what chapter to do the mass. The the main armies in the running at the minute are um, White Scars, because they're cool. Um, uh, Dark Angels, Ravenwing in particular, because, let's face it, it's kind of a bike army like the White Scars, but the rules are much better. So, uh, yeah, might do those. Plus it means that the more elite stuff in the Indomitus box, like the uh, Blade Guard Veterans... I can do as um, Deathwing as well, which gives me some different things to paint. Or, and these are probably kind of uh, first in the running, are um, Space Wolves. I think they'd be really fun to paint up, and we could get some nice um, kind of different textures and details on there with fur cloaks and upgrade bits. So, yeah. Uh, can I drop a link? Of course you can. You can you can drop you can drop whatever links that you like. Jade Paladins, of course it is. Of course it's some Jade Paladins. And you're still doing the the challenge for a gazillion successes. 
JJ spoiling the end of Titanic as well, if anybody's uh, not watched that yet. You know what? I don't think I've ever actually watched Titanic. It, um, it, 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 it doesn't have enough lightsaber battles, as far as I'm concerned. If it does have any lightsaber battles, let me know and I might give it a watch. Uh, right, so we've got this leg to go. Give this brush a bit of a clean. Uh, yeah, it, sh it should let you post a link, uh, Ben. But yeah, just, just whack it to Dave if it doesn't. I'm not sure what I've got the settings down. Link's up there. I can't actually see the link on my end. Ben, so it might it might be blocking it for everyone. Yeah, bob it bob it to Dave and then that will definitely show. Right, so we're getting there with the brown on this. Do 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 right. It's a little bit too much. Cool. So, how is everyone getting on with their uh, hobby resolution challenges? I'm going to be brutally honest. I, uh, I, I, I forget what I said for mine. I think I should try and push my painting with different techniques, which is something I've tried to do. On these streams, trying different things uh, and building a narrative for my forces that I have horrifically failed at. But my excuse is we haven't played any games, so I need to uh, I need to get back to that and come up with some names for my units and a bit of a backstory. Uh, in fact, Ben, I know you have been writing some uh, Jade Paladin's lore, so I might have to steal that idea and do something cool and come up with some kind of like. History and name of all my characters. Basically, for my forces, I wanted to try and uh, kind of create my own characters and give a bit of a bit of story there. Um, Andy Woods really torn on how to paint my space marines. I've got the stuff from Indomitus and Dark Imperium. Yeah, I've still got some of those sprues kicking around as well from uh, what was it called? Conquest magazine. Uh, basically, had a lot of the old. Dark Imperium sprues, and they're all sat under this desk as well. So we've got like a full Space Marine army good to go. Um, and there is a little part of me, and I'm very ashamed to admit that I might do them as Ultramarines, but I don't want to give uh, Nick Baton the pleasure of that, because I'll never hear the end of it. So, yeah. There was also, there was also an idea I had... Of using all those uh, assault intercessors from um, from the Indomitus box, give them blood warrior uh, helmets and make them into um, world eaters. So that's something I might look at as well. I feel uh, I've painted more good space marines than bad space marines recently, so that is also another option. And that's something I might do if I do go down the Ravenwing uh, line, because I'll probably do a fully mounted Ravenwing force uh, without any, you know, other elements of the Dark Angels in there, because I think that'd be pretty fun. Uh, though everyone in their dog seems to be doing Ravenwing and uh, Deathwing, because they're really good. But yeah, I do like this scheme. Okay, so we're getting there on Groot. Lots of brown. Once I've done this, we'll do the same again with a bit more of a highlight, maybe even a dry brush on that. And then we'll add some colour variation in with washes. Um, Jay says, you need to watch it past the credits, Matt. Rookie mistake. Darth Vader and Samuel L. Jackson turn up on the main deck. Of course they do. Uh, I'm just having a quick nosy at this link that we've got in the chat as well. What have we got here? What have we got here? Uh, oh yeah, they look really cool, don't they, Ben? The Ebon Scythes. Yeah, nice scheme, that. 
some of my neatest highlighting. Awesome. Yeah, they look really cool. Ooh, I missed a bit of highlighting behind his leg there. So let's do that bit. Again, I'm not trying to be super neat on these because I kind of want that comic booky contrast on him. Come on, focus, focus, focus. Yeah, Groot looking pretty cool. Oh yeah, I really like these models. The, the, have you painted any, Ben? They're quite chunky compared to uh, GW stuff. I'm really kind of like characterful. We did get a bit of a metallic red down on Iron Man earlier as well. You might just need another coat just to smooth it out. And then we'll add the gold and some washes. In fact, what we might do is do some pin washes on that first. And then go in neater with some of the panels. Uh, Ultramarine successes, just to make Nick happy. Yeah. It's... The bad thing is, I've really enjoyed painting that Ultramarine I did the other day. And I... Jay gave me... Oh, what have you got? I think this model has passed round the three of us over the course of our... Uh, Time doing sprues and brews. I think I bought it, gave it to Dave to add to his uh, 30k Ultramarines, and then gave it to um, Jay, and then Jay's passed it back to me. So I am going to paint this guy up. And Nick tells me apparently it's this, the likeness is sculpted on him. So, yeah. Uh, Ben's been 100% GW at the moment. Oh, okay. You've started about three armies this year, though, haven't you? How are the uh, the custodies going on? Apologies if I've completely missed you finishing that custodies force. Your uh, Imperial Guard were looking cool as well. They were some nice models. Right, so. That's looking alright. So I think what we'll do is we'll go in with the metal on Rocket's gun. Uh, the yellow casing of the gun and his kind of like undersuit. And then we'll start working on Rocket's kind of like features as well. So, so we give this brush a bit of a clean. And then we'll see how we get on there. Anyone got any exciting plans for the weekend? I know there's nothing you can do really today other than sit in the house and paint, but hey. Uh, Custodes completed like a month ago. Apologies, apologies. I've I've been I've been busy, Ben. I've been painting stuff. The uh, I I've not actually painted any custodians. I've got a fair Sisters of Silence force, and I'd love them to have some more options. I've been toying with doing a thirty uh, k Sisters of Silence army. I've got a uh, crawl up in the box up there somewhere to paint. Uh, and then there's a few variants that Forge World don't make kits for yet, like the uh, grenade launchers and the, the hunting packs. There's quite a few doggo models out there now to do the hunting packs. Uh, the Orlocks, I think, the new Orlocks come with a couple of Cyber Mastiffs. Uh, there's a couple more kits with dogs on as well. So I think they'd be quite easy to do those now. So that's the uh, that's the plan for the um, for the Sisters of Silence. I just wish they could use like a full Sisters of Silence army in uh, in 40k. I might have to end up proxying them as, I don't know, Sisters of Battle or something. Cool, so let's get us some metallics down on this gun. Uh, the guard of 3,300 points painted since January the 4th. That is impressive. And onto the new marines, adding, uh, aiming to get 2k points painted by the end of March. You are a madman, Ben. That's uh, it's impressive. It's impressive. That is an awful lot of models painted. Oh yeah, I'm impressed. So, metals, 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 metals. Let's have a look at the reference picture for here. So we've got the handle of the gun's metal, and then the surround, and then the casing is yellow. So what we might even do is go in metal on the whole thing, and then on the casing, 
we can leave some chips behind where he's kind of you know, he's got a bit worn over the time that he's been using it. So we'll start doing this in. And then I think his undersuit is just yellow. And he's got a, kind of like a dark blue, dark weeper kind of colours on the the padding on the bottom there. So that's easy enough to do. Cool. Well, let's get this gun painted first because that's going to be messy. And then we can go in and start painting rocket. Uh... <laughs> if I've nothing else to do in my spare time, I might as well as uh, lots of paints. Oh, paint lots of points, sorry. My goal is to get 24,000 points this year. That is, that is impressive. Assuming uh, lockdown ends as scheduled and the world slowly returns to normal, are you planning on uh, having a massive game in Warhammer World at some point, Ben? That'd be impressive. Big old apocalypse game with all those models on the uh, the big table with the bridge. That'd be really fun. Jade just saying that he loves Ben's uh, Legion of the Damned as well. They are they are really nice models. Some really cool conversions on them as well. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, so just blocking in the silver on this. Again, don't need to be super neat yet because we can go back and just sort out anything on Rocket later on. Just want to get these base metallics down on the gun. Because if you do it later on, then, you know, after we've painted Rocket, you get some stray metal and it's a pain. So I just thought I'd do this first. Uh, Andy Woods has painted four Gargants and 12 Squigs so far this year. Four Gargants are pretty big though, Andy. You're still doing your squig force. That's something I've always been tempted to do. I was only knowing about buying the um, the kind of box that they brought out at Christmas with all the squigs and trogoths in. But I've got so many AOS armies I need to work on. Plus, inevitably, uh, undead when they come out. Uh, what are they called? Soul Blight Grave Lords. And let's face it, the uh, the stuff in Care City will take a little while to get painted anyway. I mean, the plan is we're going to try and get that painted up ASAP and stream some games of it as well. So that'll be really exciting. Because I think um, Warhammer Quest, more than, than a lot of other games, does work kind of quite well remotely. So yeah, in fact, um, speaking of, of remote games, if you've seen the uh, the Warhammer TV guys playing Necromunda the last few Fridays, has been awesome television. So yeah, very much enjoyed that, Ben. Peachy's done a, uh, a cracking job with that, I think. Plus the gorgeous overlays, I think. Did you do them, Ben? They were cool. Uh, ooh. Oops, I think Kerry and Ben will be doing a Necron versus Nid. Oh, the Necrons and Nids versus the Imperium. That's pretty cool. It'll be 10,000 points or 12,000 points. That's that's a lot of Gargants. That's a lot of Gargants to paint. Gargants? That's a lot of points to paint. I've got Gargants on the, on the mind. I've uh, built, built my last Mega Gargan yesterday. He needs spraying today. And then, uh, yeah, over the next few weeks, hopefully get those done. I've painted a crack eater and three uh, man eaters over lockdown, and they they turned out all right. So use the same uh, concept on them, and they were pretty quick to paint. I, I used the airbrush, did um, sprayed them wraith bone, sprayed the shaded areas with dryad bark, and then built up the uh, I think Kislev flesh, and then up from there. And then went in with a red glaze and used blood letter on all the kind of like uh, creases and crevices and kind of a facial detail on them. And then kind of just kind of worked back up to the flesh colour again. So yeah, they were pretty fun. 
Uh, Andy, still doing squigs. I'm halfway through the squig herds. Then 10 bounders and a troll and a gobblepalooza. Then I have to buy things. Gobblepalooza is cool. They're, uh, I don't know how good they are in game, but they look cool. So, what we need to do now is paint Rocket's undersuit. So, I'm going to switch to a slightly smaller brush. And I think we'll start with pure yellow, maybe. Oh, God. <laughs> JC and Andy's been painting garments rather than gargants. So let's get a nice little brush here. Let's try that. And again, we'll start blocking in this undersuit. The ribbed areas, um, I'm going to be like a dark blue colour. Looking at this. So let's see how this goes on. Again, with a yellow, we'll probably need a couple of coats on this and build it up slowly. And this is quite a kind of a a, a browny yellow, just to act as like a, a base. And then again, like with the other models that we did, we could bring that up to quite a bright comic booky yellow, just because that's the vibe I'm going for. Uh, very randomly, one of the times that we went to um, to Warhammer World. We'd, we'd booked off the day. Oh, I remember when it was, guys. Was it random summer holidays? We booked off the day to play some games. And uh, Dan Abnett was signing in Warhammer World. So I'd thrown my uh, Guardians of the Galaxy collection in my case and, and got him to sign that. That was pretty cool. I... Uh, I think most of my book, book, kind of Warhammer books by Dan Abnett had already been signed over the years, so uh, I definitely thought, oh, let's uh, let's stick in the old uh, Guardians of the Galaxy and get them signed by him, which is really cool. So that's kind of Pride of Me collection. If you don't know, uh, Dan Abnett wrote. Kind of the uh, one of the more recent iterations of the Guardians of the Galaxy, and that's pretty much the the kind of the characters they based uh, the the Marvel film from the kind of Dan Abnett run. He does a, a lot of um, comic book stuff in addition to obviously his Games Workshop novels. Also, randomly, Dan Abnett wrote the backstory for the Alton Towers ride Nemesis. If you don't know that story, very random. And I believe there was an official comic that got released at the same time. Obviously, this is back in the mists of time now, but a uh, nice little obscure Dan Abnett reference for you there. Uh, I did have, I did have the, uh, I did have the um, the comic for uh, for Alton Towers Nemesis. It's long gone, long lost to the mists of time. I'd be interested in knowing how much that's worth on eBay. Probably not a lot. I think they gave them out free at the at the gates when uh, when the roller coaster was really uh, kind of opened the first time. It's just interesting they got Dan Abnett to write the backstory. All very sci-fi and weird. So what are we all up to at the minute, guys? Um, Gobblepalooza is one of Jay's favourite model kits. Yeah, I've never painted it. I've never painted it. I want. I've wanted to do a um, a goblin army quite a few times. And and if I did a goblin army, I probably would go just squigs, which isn't the most competitive army in the world, but the models are really really nice. So um, so yeah, I kind of want to kind of want to do that. I was up against um, Kerry's army, which was very squig heavy. When Archeon was laying low by a grot, yeah, that was uh, that was bad times. That was about a year, uh, more than a year ago. When was that? Last January. That was a fun game of Warhammer. 
So yeah, misplayed. I mean, re- really, last year, I, we, I don't know how many games of Warhammer we had, but it wasn't many. We had the um, the Purple Sparklies tournament in January, I want to say, and then we had a 40k one in March. I think it was literally days before lockdown, where I brought my uh, sisters a battle that I've been frantically painting since they came out. They did all right. Uh, and then and then we were in lockdown. I think we managed to... There's a brief window in the middle where restrictions eased a little bit. And uh, I managed to get a couple of games. Played against Craig Chesters with his, um, his lizard men, Seraphon. I managed to beat him with me uh, Slaves of Darkness list. So that was the, that was the gaming achievement of, uh, of last year. And then, yeah, other than that, I think we managed a one-day tournament, maybe it was. Again, in between lockdowns, me and Dave managed to have a game of Sigma with the uh, Bone Reapers. Oh, they're not the Bone Reapers. It was the, uh, the Mega Gargants, the Sons of Bayamat. And, uh, and, yeah, we managed to have a couple of games... As part of the uh, 40k 9th edition coverage. And Indomitus. And then we're back in lockdown again. So uh, yeah we've not had as many games. Well any games since then. So definitely got some Warhammer withdrawal. Desperate. Desperate to roll some dice. So yeah if. If restrictions are easing in the next couple of months. That is definitely on the to-do list. Play some Warhammer. Uh, Dave had his copy of No No Fear to sign. That's cool. Uh, and he's 50% done on the base coats on his Rohan Warriors. Nice. So, if you, I want to say you painted up another Middle Earth army earlier in lockdown, Andy. But I forget what it was. I forget what it was. Either way, we need to have a game. My uh, my Dunland force will face your Rohan uh, when we can. That'd be fun. In fact, Andy, if you're up for it, we could even stream it. Obviously, when restrictions have eased a little bit. Because, yeah, I, uh, I really want to have a game of Middle Earth because we haven't played it for ages. Still up for doing an event as well, again, when we can. This uh, this yellow is covering quite nice, actually. This is uh, Pure Oxide Yellow from Instar. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's covered really nicely. We'll do a similar colour for the kind of, like, the body of the gun when that's dry. And then we'll start painting... Uh, Rocket skin, which I think needs to be a different a different kind of brown than, than Grutus. We might keep that quite dark compared to uh, to Groot. And then we'll do kind of white and black detail on the face and start building that up. So I think what we'll do is kind of like this this section here with the gun we'll do in yellow. So we'll just get a point back on this brush and then start blocking that in. Andy says I might have to order some more Rohan now. Excellent. Yeah, I mean I've got I've got some painted Rohan as well. If you do need to borrow any, Andy. But uh, yeah, let me do some do some cool scenarios. That'd be fun. I'll be a little bit rusty having not played for over a year. I think just before lockdown, me and uh, me and Jay managed to get a couple of games of of Middle Earth in. In fact, we did, didn't we, Jay? That's the game where my uh, Uruk-hai crossbowmen did far more damage to my own army than they did to you. Within the way shots. And shooting into combat. That was a fun game as well. Elves versus um, Saruman and the uruk -hai. That's a little bit patchy, but we'll be able to put another another layer on there. This energy device here, I think we'll put kind of like a blue glow on as well. I think that's some kind of like little energy arc reactory thing. Uh, 
But yeah. This is probably the littlest model in the uh, in the range. In fact, no, I tell a lie. There is um, Ant-Man and the Wasp who come with versions of themselves at full size and then shrunk down uh, mini versions to represent them when they've used their uh, their ability to shrink down to the size of an ant. Yeah, that's a super nice yellow. And again, that's just that's just the base colour. I've not I've not mixed this or anything. Yeah, I'm impressed with that. I need to. I, I desperately need to do a paint order as well. But the spray cans have been out of stock for like the entirety of this year. So as soon as spray cans are available again, I need to do a big supplies order and stock up. I'm running low on air. Uh, Kind of base materials as well. I need to get a load of tufts, uh, grass tufts and static grass and the like. Don't know if anyone else is the same, but I tend to do a big kind of annual supply order and get all those bits and bobs in. So if anyone's got any recommendations for uh, grass tufts and static grass and all that kind of stuff, let me know. Open to uh, to all suggestions. Jay, you've um, you've had some luck in kind of big bulk packs of um, tufts, haven't you? I don't know where you got those from. Would be interested in knowing. Okay, so that yellow is looking okay. Once that's dried, we'll probably go back in. And do another coat on that and start building it up. Uh, <laughs> Andy says he feels semi-old. It's okay if uh, he's not played Middle Earth in 20 years. Yeah, that's um, that's uh, that's a fair point. Uh, Sam in the chat says, what's the reason for using spray cans rather than airbrush for, for priming and basic? So I, I do use the airbrush for priming, but the problem is primer through the airbrush clogs up the airbrush something bad it takes a load of cleaning so just for pure laziness uh, rattle cans i can prime them for my lunch leave them outside they'll be sorted and i don't have to worry about um worry about kind of cleaning out the airbrush when i'm just priming things uh rocket and group for example did prime with the airbrush got some brown colors on them before the stream so i do use it but for um for this kind of stuff surface primer from Vallejo that I normally use it is good and it is convenient being able to do it inside uh, but it does clog, clog up the airbrush a bit um, so that's that's the only reason I tend to use rattle cans for priming I I have used um, surface primer through the airbrush before um, like all these Marvel miniatures I did use in them just because I didn't have any rattle cans to hand but yeah pretty much the answer is I'm lazy and I don't have to give the uh, airbrush a deep clean because that does clog the de uh, clog the uh, the brush a little bit. And it is perfectly fine to use it for, for kind of for kind of putting base colours down on things. I will use the airbrush as well. So prime them up first and then use that. Like I said earlier in the stream, the Mega Gargants are pretty much exclusively done using the airbrush, as were my Sons of Horus. So yeah, just one of those. So, Iron Man looking a little bit better now. He does need another coat. He's just a little bit patchy in areas. So I think what we're going to do is we'll go in with some washes and do kind of like a recess wash on places. And then we'll pick out the panels individually. So while they're drying, we'll do that now. Uh, let's get a wash and a Pick out that detail there, just gets it a bit, uh, adds a bit of definition to it, I suppose, compared to going it over all again with that base colour. <laughs> Jay says there hasn't been a Middle Earth battle game in these parts for a thousand years. Nice, uh, nice reference there. 
So we're going to do this in a similar way to how we did the um, the webbing on Spider-Man last week. Basically putting in a kind of more focused wash just on the recesses. Uh, pin washing, I believe the, the technical term for this is. It just means that we can add that, that definition. Kind of adds a bit of shading to it. And then when we go in and do the, the next coat of the metallic red, we can focus it on kind of like the raised areas then. And we should get a bit of natural natural shading out of it. Now this is a bit of a time consuming job. Obviously it's a little bit fiddly picking out the details. What I wouldn't do is just like wash the entire thing. Because that's going to make the kind of the red armor panels that we've done look a little bit mucky and murky, and kind of take away from the, you know, really vivid sheen we've got to Iron Man. So yeah, we'll pop these in and just slowly build up those uh, recess details, and then that saves us a job later on. It should look a bit nicer then. And again, it breaks up. See, he's, he's predominantly <coughs> two colours, isn't he? Red and red and gold. So by going in with washes on the recesses, we can just break up those colours a bit. And we'll do the same once the gold's down as well. The other benefit of doing this now is that we'll be able to see the distinction between the different arm panels as well. They can be a little tricky to um, to make out otherwise. Because there are a few like panels. Here we're in painting that are gold. So just by picking them out it will make it uh, a bit easier to distinguish them. The arc reactor. I am going to put a bit of a wash in there. But we are going to do some tricks with... Um, with some object source lighting effects so we'll probably paint that uh, white and then start building up a glow around it but again if we just get this wash in the recesses around the arc reactor that then again just gives it a bit of contrast and a bit of a focal point so we can start working on that but yeah this is a this is a really nice model actually now reading on um various forums and sites about the game. I don't think Iron Man's actually a very uh, popular choice from the game from uh, how effective he is point of view. But uh, I really like the model. And again as I said way back at the start of the, the show I kind of picked this up just to paint core Marvel models rather than you know pick the most competitive choices for the units because while I will be playing the game for me this is more about painting up cool stuff. So yeah. And I'm sure if we get into the game, there'll be units that I pick up because they're cool, but uh, yeah, at the minute, just painting what looks cool. So I picked up the entirety of the Guardians of the Galaxy because they're ace, basically. Uh, you know, I, I like the models, I like the uh, the comics rather than than being particularly strong in game. Uh, I've got the rest of the starter box. I've also picked up Vision as well because, uh, again, inspired by Wonder Vision. Uh, Wonder and Pietro are released in a couple of months as well, so they're going to have to get added to the uh, the force and painted up because you know we can't not have the Scarlet Witch, can we? If we've got Vision. So yeah, I do wonder if they'll ever release any different like uh, marks of Iron Man armour. Because that would be cool. And again, we're just basically focusing these, focusing these washes in the recess detail. Just to add a bit of definition to the armour. Because it, it is very red at the minute. So we just need to bring that back down again. And be able to kind of distinguish the breaks between the different line, uh, the different armor panels. 
yeah, it just makes it just makes this a lot easier to work with. Again, there's a lot of gold detail that we need to add as well, but by doing this in, uh, now we can uh, make it easier to distinguish those breaks in the armor later on. Uh, Anonymous Rex, how's it going? It is going well, thanks. We are painting more Marvel Crisis Protocol miniatures. Uh, we are painting up Iron Man and Groot and Rocket Raccoon. And they're really nice models. We've been experimenting with metallic uh, colours. So we've mixed up a custom metallic red using Instar's Metal Plus. And really happy with how it looks. The camera is having a hell of a time focusing on it because it is super shiny. But yeah, and at the minute we're just picking out all the kind of the edging of the armor panels using a wash just to distinguish the breaks in the lines. And then yeah, it's uh, it's been quite a constructive day. I feel we've got a lot done in what an hour and a half. Uh, obviously the face is going to be gold, so don't need to worry about this too much. But again, if we get the the recess washes in, and we can focus the kind of the gold areas above that then. Uh, so we've got that, we've just got a little bit of detail down here on the foot that we just need to pick out. And then some of these armour panels here. So yeah, they're quite, they're all plastic models, but they're quite detailed. There's quite a lot of kind of shallow recess details on these, so. Just by going in with this pin wash, we can just, uh Distinguish those a bit. Yeah, he's looking alright, isn't he? So, for any uh, any newcomers in the chat, what are you guys working on today? There's a right mixed assortment of, of stuff people are working on. <coughs> from um, from Rohan warriors to reavers. Jay's painting up something secret that he won't tell us. So I am intrigued as to what that is. Any any clues, Jay, on what you're painting? We've got Space Marine successor chapters being painted up, all sorts. Uh, Anonymous Rex looks nice. Have you seen the Dark Souls board game models? Love any franchises are expanding into miniatures. Uh, I am aware of the Dark Souls miniatures, but I haven't painted any... Or even seen them in the flesh myself. Uh, I have painted some of the Elder Scrolls miniatures game stuff from uh, Medifius. They are really nice. Uh, what's cool about that game is that you can play it single player as well. They've got a delve mode where it's basically a more kind of, I suppose, single player RPG. With an AI system that um, determines how your opponents move so um so yeah that's that's worth checking out uh, the models were a little bit on the pricey side but they are all resin so i think it's about i, I say they're on the pricey side between 30 and 40 quid for a box of five which to be fair is you know comparable with other miniatures ranges isn't it uh you do need a bit of a variety of models to do your delves though you'll probably want quite a few uh, kind of generic monsters for you to to fight your way through. Right, he's getting there now, isn't he? Uh, Dave says Iron Man is looking good so far. Cheers. Yeah, I'm quite happy with how he's turning out. That red, that red's worked out all right, hasn't it? Nice metallic red. Cool. So again, we we'll just pop in a bit more definition in some of these. These lower areas. And again, the reason why I've been painting multiple miniatures today is while we're waiting for these washes to dry, we can then go back and hopefully that yellow one rocket's dried a bit so we can do a, a second coat on them. And then, yeah, really, for, for Groot, we just need to add a bit more colour variation using washes. We might dry brush another couple of colours in and then he's, uh, he's pretty much there. And then Rocket... Just needs his, uh, his skin painting then. 
So I feel I should be able to get all these done by the end of the day. Not on the not by the time we finish the stream, but uh, yeah, we'll definitely get a bit of work done on these. Any any requests on uh, what you want to see painted next week, guys? Got a lot of Marvel uh, Marvel miniatures left to paint, but I know I've been doing a couple of weeks worth of Marvel on the stream now. So, would anyone like to see some different stuff? Anyone interested in me painting up some uh, Napoleonics on the stream? I know that's a bit more a bit more niche, but I have got some Napoleonic miniatures that need painting up. Uh, equally. It's been a little while since we've painted some GW stuff on the stream, so I think what we might do is maybe even paint some uh, some Daughters of Cain on the stream next week. A couple of snakes have a play with different uh, different ways of painting them up. Yeah, he's starting to get there now, isn't he? Uh, So, Jesus, if I told you, some people would come, collect you, and lock you up, I'm afraid. Hmm. Interesting. Is Jason working on something inquisitorial, perhaps? Uh, Dave just stepped outside and sprayed another mini. Excellent. What, what have you sprayed up, Dave? What are you working on? In fact, that's the point. Your, uh, your your hobby challenge you've smashed this week, haven't you? You've painted two units. So this one that you're getting ready for um, the next week of the challenge. I have to say, it is very nice outside today, though. I might have to go for a bit of a walk later on. Uh Anonymous Rex, how are the Napoleon miniatures? I always like the artillery. Yeah, they're nice. So, um, while waiting for them to dry, I'll, I'll show you a couple of these. So, they are from Warlord Games. The infantry themselves are, are fairly basic and generic, but, you know, you're going to be painting hundreds of these. So, if I grab some of these models to show you. There's a range of stuff. There's a range of stuff. So... The bulk of the infantry are just fairly, fairly simple models. Just three pieces, these. The the body, the backpack and the head. And there's like four or five different sculpts on a sprue. And then you'll have, you know, 20 of these guys in a unit. And then they have separate metal command with uh, banners and, and drummers and officers and stuff. These have got a bit more detail than these guys. So... Majority of my time will be painted on uh, spent painting these guys up with the uh, the basic infantry done fairly quickly, um, just to get them battle ready, battlefield ready maybe, and then some of the more elite units. So we've got some uh, some some chosen rifles there. These are all metal miniatures as well. So they are based individually because they're skirmishers. All these guys are based uh, four to a square base. So. Again, I'll probably paint them separately, stick them on the base, and then put some uh, static grass and tufts and flock and stuff on them. So that is probably what I'll be spraying up after the stream, because, uh, yeah, I've got hundreds of those guys to paint up. Um, so, Jay says, what about some Aleph or Daughters of Cain? Yeah, so I have not painted any, I'm not painting any Infinity full stop. So they may be a possibility. They may be a possibility. If I get those sprayed up today, uh, yeah, maybe we'll get some left on the stream because that's something a bit different as well. They're going to be predominantly kind of glossy white armour with some, some purple kind of shadow details. Uh, equally, we've got some Daughters of Cain. We've got some Melusi that I need to paint up. So they could well be on the, the list of stuff to paint as well. So I'm going to try and get some stuff sprayed while it's nice over the next few days. And then, uh, yeah, we'll have a bit of assortment. I might even stick up a poll on Twitter and uh, let, let you, the viewer, decide what we're going to paint. That'll be a bit of fun. Ah, so Dave has, as 
is his way. Jumped from legion to legion within our little Horus Heresy uh, campaign. You had been working on some uh, some world eaters, but I don't think you enjoyed the white armour. And we suggested, well, hang on, why not do something silver? And uh, yeah, Iron Warriors seem to be the uh, the idea at the minute. So um, I think you picked up the old um, Praetor and Terminator armour that was released alongside... Oh, I can't remember what box it was in now. Either um, Betrayal at Kalth or... Um, I think it was in Betrayal at Kalth. Or the Prospero one. The Prospero one had the Araman figure in it, didn't it? So it's probably in the Betrayal at Kalth box. And uh, yeah, you're going to turn him into... I think there's a named character, isn't there? In the Iron Warriors. That unlocks Terminators as troops. So I think we're going to do him as him, Dave. And convert him up or even just paint him directly as him I'm I'm really looking forward to playing some heresy we haven't played it for an awful long time and it is a super fun system it's a bit more detailed than uh, the current edition of the game because it's based on uh, 7th edition off the top of my head so there's quite a few more levels to the complexity of it but um yeah some fun stuff and with it predominantly being space marines versus space marines it is a little more kind of quote marks balanced uh dave says yes it's from calf yeah those boxes were so good i hope we do get a another heresy box at some point a new heresy starter box with an updated rule book and a load of models be so good for the game and bring some new blood into the into the hobby so yeah i mean we've seen the same for um middle earth haven't we so hopefully and in fact middle earth necromunda a lot of these games have had really nice uh boxes to introduce people into the game so a new heresy one i think could go down really well obviously we uh we don't know if that is even going to happen, but it'd be uh, it'd be nice to see. So Dave says he's marked the same as the special character. Perfect. So yeah, nice easy, nice easy one then. Uh, no no conversion needed. Got the same loadout. That's a that's a bit of luck, isn't it? So yeah, basically just strengthening this yellow now. And then I'll do the uh, the kind of dark blue areas. I might base them kind of black first, or in fact, let me see. I think I've got a pre-mixed kind of dark black uh, that I've mixed up with some of the Instar colours. That I might use for that. It's kind of like a blue black, like kind of uh, dark Reaper esque colour. Let me see if I can find that. Um, definitely did have it mixed somewhere. Somewhere in my collection, but it's obviously gone walkies. Leather. Nope, I must have completely misplaced that. Unless it's out on here. Pure black. Your blue. Nope, it's gone walkie, doesn't it? So we'll have to mix that up. Ba -bum. So, no worries, we can do that dead easily though. So we'll get a pure blue and basically darken it down quite a lot. So we'll put a drop of blue. We will add some black. Again, a couple of drops of this just to bring down the. Uh, the intensity of that blue so one two we'll see how that looks and then if we need to in fact that looks all right that so two black one blue and then we can go back in with a slightly uh, lighter shade of blue and just bring that up so this is just on his knee pads and all those kind of like ribbed areas on the armor Uh, 
and then we'll just highlight it with a with a slightly lighter blue just to highlight that very dark black do, do, do. do that there it's a small detail on the model And then we're probably about ready to start painting his flesh. Which again, we'll do maybe some lighter brown. Pure brown, yeah. We might start with pure brown for his skin and then uh, work that up as well. And then his face, obviously, we'll have black and white. Which would be cool. Cool. So that's that. Yeah, so we'll clean the brush and we'll put some brown on rockets and get his flesh colours built up. So yeah, it's been quite a quite a successful stream, I feel we've got a lot done. How's everyone else getting out on the chat? Have you guys managed to uh, get painted what you wanted to do? How's everyone getting on? So let's put some brown down. I'm running out of brown actually, I need to get some more. And we'll just start building up this flesh colour. Put some round on the face. Yeah. Yeah, so we have some kind of black and white fur on the main bit of the face, so just this kind of like hair here. And then the arms, really, we want to do a little bit of an area where we've kind of gone over his arms with the silver. So we'll just salvage that. And just neaten up any of the areas we might have missed with a few other colours. Get that down in there. Okay, we just need to make sure that these these arms are all the same colour, otherwise it'll look a little bit unnatural. Again with the other arm in his hand. We've just got a little bit on his thumb there. Oh, so that's, that's actually a glove. So we might do that in the same uh, kind of dark blue colour we used earlier. Has he got a glove on that hand? Yeah, he has. So, what have they used on the box art? Yeah, I think they've used the kind of dark, dark black blue. So we use that same colour again there for the kind of gloves that he's got on. Just touch up there. And then the feet and the legs, we'll just start building up the colours on. And then, once all that's done, we can have the kind of white and black bits, which will be on his tail as well, but we'll just put this on so we've got a consistent colour. Just with it being a different a different brown than the initial brown that we sprayed it in. The main reason for spraying this brown first was A, the yellow will cover it slightly better than just black. Uh, and B, I wanted to make sure that the root here was the same colour as Groot. So just um, just getting that done was a priority to make sure that I get it all tied together. Now on the face, what I'll probably do is paint the eyes and the mouth first and then go in and paint the face proper. Because otherwise you paint the face and then do the eyes last, uh, you're going to get paint on what you've done the face. So it makes sense to do the eyes first. And really, there's going to be pinpoints of black with a little white reflection in them, if we can get away with that. So yeah, he's looking okay. I've got to say, Rocket's one of my favourite characters, because who doesn't love a gun-toting raccoon? Cool, so let's get to that blue-black, which is still on our palette. 
and we'll do his uh, gloves with that colour. So Dave says Reaver's armour is now black. We'll start on the silver arm shortly. So these for your uh, these for your death watch, aren't they, Dave? Uh, right, gloves. Okay, we'll just block that in black. Blacky blue. Just with that hint of uh, blue in there, it'll make highlighting these a little bit easier than having it pure black. Because realistically, it's it, it, having things pure black and pure white makes it very hard to paint them. Having them colours that are slightly off that. So a grey white I'd use rather than white, and a blue black rather than blue. Just means that you can use the, the, the blue or the grey in there. Uh, to, to build up a nice transition and then for the white in particular just have the kind of like most extreme kind of edge highlight as pure white and that will look much more natural than, than trying to paint it white white okay so rocket is looking all right we are getting there cool so we need to wash down there but we need to wait for these colors to dry first so we'll leave him for five minutes so what have we got we've got 15 minutes left on the stream i think what we're going to start doing on iron man is reapplying the uh, the red areas and doing the gold we might start with the gold areas first actually because then if we miss anywhere we can then uh, go back and touch up with the uh, the red so we're going to use a gold Pick out that and then try and work out which areas are gold. So obviously his face is, we've got areas under the arm, there's some little panels on the chest and there's some panels on the legs that are gold. So I've got a handy reference photo just out of shot and we'll work to that. Anything like this I'd always you know, work from either the model box or any reference photos. Um, obviously with Marvel stuff, you've got quite a wide selection of uh, reference stuff that you can look at. Various colour schemes they've been in the comics and in the films. So just having something that you can you can reference and try and match the colours uh, makes life a lot easier. I mean, you can just make it up as you go along. There's nothing wrong with that. Or have your own custom colour schemes. But for these, I very much wanted them to kind of uh, match how they look in the comics. So we have got the face panel, which goes up to there. Let's see. So again, we've been a bit more a bit more careful now because obviously we have got some existing colours down that we don't want to have to do again so we're just focusing this where we need it taking our time no need to rush and just slowly building up this metal colour using a small brush and if you do miss and slip uh, all I do is, is just wet your finger and, and slide the paint off as long as you do it quickly you should be able to remove any stray paint straight away using that uh, the only exception to that is if if you kind of blend in you've, you've got other wet colours in that might make it a little bit more difficult okay and then it goes down straight and goes out a little bit so this little oops this little cheek area here is gold and then the bottom of the mask is red I believe yeah the chin is red so if we go down to his mouth that is gold
And again, trying to leave, trying to leave the kind of darkest areas in the eyes. Still quite dark, uh, because then that's done the shading for us already. Now on fiddly models, I tend to leave the head separate. For all these Marvel models, I haven't. Uh, just because I wanted to get them built up, really. So, uh, so yeah, what I would recommend if you're painting faces, uh, if you can, leave them separately. I normally attach them to uh, just, just, just a cork from a, from a bottle of whiskey. Stick that on there and, and paint them up. Uh, these are really good because you've got the plastic like top of the bottle cap uh, which gives you a nice little handle while you can have um, the, the head stuck to the top of there. Uh, Dave's got to run. Oh, I see, we'll see you soon, Dave. Hope you managed to get the uh, the Death Watch finished today. So how's everyone else getting on? Have we managed to... Uh, Paint whatever we're painting today. Oh, he's looking alright, isn't he? Okay, so then we've got some gold areas. These panels here and here are gold. So we give the brush a clean. Make sure we've got a point on there and block those gold areas in. And then once we've done this gold, we're nearly done on Iron Man. He's uh. Like I said earlier, by doing the kind of the, the shading stage there, he is very nearly there. So we've got these panels here. They are gold. And this panel here is gold. Cool. And then under his arms we've got panels as well that need doing. So these kind of panels here and here are gold. So we'll do them next. I don't think it extended up there. I think it's just the lower area of here. So I see the join there. Some of the uh, some of the details are quite shallow on these models, so you just have to be careful when you're priming them that you don't. Um, you don't kind of like clog all the detail because yeah they are quite fine and that could mess up things a little bit if you're not careful so yeah just bear that in mind when you're painting these but that's looking all right With the same kind of metallic sheen going on. So we've got a couple of panels on the legs as well that are gold. Uh, again, I'm just going to refer to the colour here. So we've got a couple of panels on the legs and the knees as well. So the lower part of the knees are gold. So there's a little little panel here. Oops, little panel here, and that is gold there. I'll just give the brush a bit of a clean and make sure we've got a paint. Hey, Andy says, uh, biceps are done, base coats are done. Uh, I guess there's some also correct uh, shenanigans going on there, Andy. Base coats are done. Well, that's good going. That's a, that's a successful, what, nearly two hours? That's not bad at all. Let's pop this in. Jay, are you still in the uh, the chat? How are you getting on with your uh, your progress this morning? So that is gold. And then we've got above that is gold as well. So that's red. We've put a little bit of gold here. A little bit of gold here. Uh, I don't think we've got any gold detail on the feet. And then we've got some gold panels at the side. 
think this panel here is gold. So that is gold there. And there is Iron Man. Yeah, he's looking all right, isn't he? I uh, I don't think those colours are too far off. So for the metallic red, that was um, five drops of metal plus and three drops of pure red. If you do want that uh, that recipe for Iron Man's red armour, that works that works quite well. Uh, you could also apply that colour to say if you wanted a uh, kind of a metallic red armour on. Uh, I don't know pre uh, the Heresy era. Thousand Suns, maybe that could work on them as well. So yeah, pretty happy with how he's how he's turning out. I might go back in and add kind of a highlight to the gold areas, and the same with the red areas. But uh, yeah, for an initial for an initial sketch out of the colours, that's pretty good. I'm, I like that. So um, yeah, let's see if Rocket's ready for some finishing details on him. Obviously, we're not going to get these finished on the stream because uh, we're only streaming until two. But I feel we've managed to get a good a good chunk of stuff done there. Obviously, Groot has uh, kind of mostly got his base colours down now. He'll need some more highlights and some kind of detail, some kind of greens and greys in there as well, just to mix it up. And obviously, the eyes will be white. Uh, and we might kind of dry brush a lighter brown colour, but then he's not going to take too much work to do. Same again on the route from there. Uh, Rocket, we're just going to start picking out the uh, the black and the white details on the face and, and paint his mouth and eyes. And then again, what we'll probably do to finish today is kind of wash down this silver and then uh, we can start kind of weathering that and, and building that back up again. So on that, we'll start building the wash. On there, we'll use a black wash. Uh, if you want something a bit rustier, you could use maybe a, a, a brown wash there. But I think a black wash is going to give us more of the kind of effect that we want. So again, we'll just pop this on there and just let it flow into the areas where it's going to be in shadow. We'll just... Pop these details on here. And on the little reactor thing. Again, we'll probably have a bit of a blue glow going from this when we are done. And same on here where this this weapon's charging up. I think we'll have a nice blue glow effect going on. I think that'll work quite well with him. So we'll pop that in. Careful to try and not get any on the, the yellow. We will kind of recess shade the yellow, but obviously we don't want a, a kind of dirty yellow effect because we want it quite quite clean and bright. So we're just going to get the brush to a nice point and then just paint that into the recesses. Okay. Again, around the edge of this piece. And then there's just a few little kind of recesses on the bodysuit that we're just going to shade. Again, just get that little bit of detail and a bit of definition to it. There we go, that's, that's looking alright and then we'll be able to highlight all this then with a lighter yellow once we're done. A little bit of detail down here. Let's see, there's a, there's a patchy area underneath but you're not going to see it on the tabletop so I'm not too bothered there. But basically, that's how he's looking so far. Once we've got the white and black fur on the face done and the tail, then we're nearly there then. Then just be a case of a few finishing touches, uh, do the base, and we'll be good to go. 
So he's he's nearly there. Rocket uh, Groot's nearly there. Iron Man just needs. Uh, there might be some more armor panels that I just need to pick out and just smoothen out a little bit. But happy with Iron Man's progress and his shiny red armor. I think that's worked all right. So yeah, I think we're going to call it there today, guys. But I hope you've enjoyed the stream. Uh, again, just having to play with some different techniques and stuff. Obviously, we've been playing with custom metallic, so that's been a successful experiment today. And like I say, we'll probably put a bit of a uh, poll up on Twitter. So if you let us know what you'd like us to see next week, that would be uh, much appreciated. Uh, Jay making good progress on his painting. A few hours left to finish it, though, I think. Awesome. So yeah, so I hope you've enjoyed that, guys. It's um, it's been it's been fun. I um, we're streaming every Sunday lunchtime, and we are looking at a kind of weekday uh, evening stream as well. So again, any feedback on what days you'd like to see us stream, let us know. But yeah, until next time, we'll see you all next time, and uh, have a good rest of the weekend.